All right, so today I want to show you a very simple but also very useful piece of test equipment that I built. It's basically an amplifier for a function generator. So this thing basically takes in your signal input and then just beefs it up. And so you get, you know, a little bit of amplification here, maybe 10x and lots of watts behind it so you can drive things like transformers light bulbs anything you need a lot more current than more than like a few milliamps this is a little pcb that i designed for this thing it's actually very simple there's just two op amps and some extra components for you know keeping everything stable uh this is the pcb i got these from uh, pcb way I mean, there's lots of companies you can get them from now, but I chose PCB Way this time uh, because it made sense to do so, and I wanted to see how good they were. They are amazing, by the way. As you can see, some slight problems with this thing. It works, though, but just like any project, it's just a prototype at this stage. So I've got this little clip-on heat sink here. Um, I think I might need to go a bit bigger with that because the way it is now, it gets stupid hot it's driven by two 24 volt power supplies there are 24 volts at uh, i think six and a half amps each to give you plus and minus 24 uh, i think this chip can take higher actually they both can take higher than that they can take up to maybe 36 or 40 volts or something like that maybe more all i remember is that 48 volt supplies were too much so i had to go with 24s yeah so I'll show you what this thing is capable of. It seems to run just fine. I have a function generator over here, which will give me, you know, various different waveforms at various different signal levels and frequencies, up to about two megahertz. The design for this thing, I pulled from a, an article, which I'll link in the description. And I think that bandwidth is good up to about a megahertz, depending on how you, depending on how much gain you have it rigged for. It's kind of janky right now. It's pretty much only good up to about the kilohertz range, but still much better than an audio amp would ever do. All right then, so I got this thing hooked up to a little transformer here, just like a 12.6 volt center tap and a 120 volt transformer. Um, if I turn this on, uh, let's see, we'll see what the scope shows here. As I vary the frequency. It would help if you turned it on first. So we got a sine wave there. It's about a kilohertz or so. Yeah, yeah, nothing special, right? The max amplitude of this thing, I can get it pretty dang high. I can get this thing up to uh, pretty high voltage on that second area if I really wanted to. But the beauty of this is now I can sweep the frequency around. If I go up to a different range here, I can see what, uh, you know, kilohertz frequencies look like. And I can use this to find the resonant frequency of the transformer, like I did here. Well, actually, I might be exceeding the limit of my voltage limit of my scope probe. I probably shouldn't be doing that, but you get the point. Very useful for driving loads that need, you know, any semblance of current. This thing is current limited, so if you do like short it out or if you draw a load that's too heavy, it will stop it from just completely burning up. Uh, that's set by this uh, black 0.1 ohm resistor. There's like a current sense lead on this op amp and it will limit the current. Um, I've got it set at a pretty low value right now. Like it's at maybe just a couple amps, maybe like three or four amps. So right now I hooked a 0.1 microfarad 600 volt to uh, film capacitor across the secondary of the transformer and so we're getting some decent ringing there and uh, if we identify the frequency of that ring we can find the uh, resonant frequency of the transformer So you can, if, if, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's an audible sound right now. 
that the transformer winding is making. And if I sweep that around, it drops, and if I sweep it up, it also drops. Um, it's some weird waveforms there. Right then, so here's the schematic. Um, like I said, it's pretty simple. We got an OPA 445 and an OPA 450 541. Both are high voltage op amps. High voltage meaning they can handle uh, probably 80, 90 volts. I don't remember exactly, um, but they're have very good bandwidth and very good, you know, input offset and all that good stuff. So they're actually very expensive devices. This thing costs maybe 22 bucks. This thing co probably costs like 11. But uh, they're much better than normal op amps, and they, they do the job very well. So I have an offset trim uh, trimmer pot there. I've got the gain setting networks of these. Really, you should split the gain evenly between these two or have slightly more gain on this one because this one can handle... This time has more gain bandwidth product than this one does. But uh, whatever. And they've got some protection diodes here. If you're driving inductive loads, you have to have these. Otherwise, they'll just fry this thing. I've got the uh, decoupling caps here, and I labeled where on the board they're lined up. I try to set them, locate them close to the device itself. Um, so at high frequencies, they still work. And uh, honestly, 680 microfarad, that's a pretty big cap. It's a little oversized, but, you know, a little bigger is better, I think. So yeah, again, very simple schematic. There was actually a, a company that used to make these things, a Chinese company that made these things for a little while and then they sort of went out of business. And then nobody really makes them anymore. And so I just pulled this design from online and just built one because they do make these things. They're just really, really expensive. And the bandwidth is terrible. It's only a lot of the ones you can get on like DigiKey or Mauser or any website that might sell test equipment, they can go up to maybe 300 kilohertz if you tune this thing properly, you can get up to 1 megahertz, probably. And then the op amps will, of course, uh, slew rate limit or something. Okay, so I'm, I hooked up a capacitor here to see how well it drives capacitive loads. And apparently not very well, because look at the scope. Um, it's oscillating at some really high frequency, and when you adjust the frequency knob on the uh, function generator, it doesn't change it. So, yeah. Now let's see about uh, inductive loads. This uh, tr primary, this transformer's got to be eh, probably a couple henrys of inductance. Let's see what it does. So if I bring up the frequency and the amplitude, I should see something on the scope shortly, if not immediately. Well, it would help if you had the scope probe hooked up. Looks like it's just fine. If I turn on the square wave, you can kind of see a bit of ringing, but you know, that was what we were getting before, and it's totally what you might expect given the interwinding capacitances and all that. So, yeah, drives inductive loads great. Um, capacitive loads, not so much, but then again, I think. Uh, in general, amplifiers with lots of negative, global negative feedback don't tend to do so well with that anyway. Unless there's lots of resistance in series with it. But yeah, uh, I encourage you to build one of these. They are, you probably build it much better than I can. They are so useful. Uh, <clears throat> this is just a prototype, obviously. There's nothing really special going on here. Uh, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than what you can get on the web at this point, so... Uh, no one really makes, sells any kits of these things either, so it really does make sense to build your own. Good luck.